Hello, Tier Noughts, and welcome to this daily market commentary for Friday, the 21st of June, and also incorporating the weekend of the 22nd and 23rd for those uh, cryptocurrency enthusiasts out there. What a uh, what a week we had. Finally, to Friday in the weekend, uh, but not without a plethora of further action. Uh, the main the headline hitting the markets on Friday came courtesy of President Trump, who uh, appears to have not only ordered a military strike against Iran, but uh, with planes in the air and ships in position, then reversed his decision. Um, the markets really didn't know how to react. Uh, equity markets nudged slightly lower, and uh, for FX, the uh, currencies are referred to as the risk-on currencies like Aussie, Kiwi, and Canada. Uh, lost a little ground, but uh, gold was the main beneficiary, rallying up to a high of 14.11. Um, but then backed off following a comment from President Trump that he was in no hurry to attack Iran. Uh, uh, I would I would suggest that maybe he was in a hurry to attack Iran and then had a second thought, but uh, never a dull moment uh, with the president. Um, and certainly had the markets on the hop really before the uh, trading activity for Friday uh, got going. So uh, let's turn to crypto. Um, so what happened with crypto Friday and into the weekend? Um, you know, as I mentioned in Thursday's commentary, Bitcoin decided to show some uh, fairly independent late day strength. It was trying to uh, nudge higher uh, whilst the rest of the market was sitting fairly calm. Um, that will continue into Friday uh, with Bitcoin reaching a high of uh, 99.62 before the end of the day, sort of shy of that uh, that ten thousand uh, level, the big psychological level. Um, you know, not to be mentioned, left behind. Uh, majority of the other coins did follow suit, up between two and six percent on Friday. The one outlier would be uh, Ethereum, which was up almost ten percent on the day to a high of uh, two ninety five fifty. So, uh, would the weekend be uh, bring a similar charge higher that we saw last weekend? Absolutely, it would. Um, you know, as I mentioned many times before, the weekend uh, in crypto is is a strange time because we do see obviously a uh, quite a significant um, pullback in liquidity. So we we can on occasion get some extreme moves, and this weekend was uh, was no exception. Um, Bitcoin screwed up through the ten thousand level up to uh, a high of. Uh, really, where we are as I make this uh, this commentary at the 11,200 level, uh, it takes the whole crypto market with it. Ether um, is traded up to a high of 316, Litecoin up to 146, and, uh, and Ripple briefly uh, poked its head above the 50 cent level before settling back uh, nearer to 48 cents. So, you know, why is this, why this next leg higher? It's obviously been quite a, uh, you know, a, quite a quick move we've seen here. Um, over the last couple of weeks, um, or even, even just looking back, uh, you know, going back a week, um, you know, we've had some fairly significant uh, movement higher. Um, I think what we really have here is is a continuation of crypto really benefiting from the macro picture. So benefiting from lower yields, bond yields, um, the notion that the interest rates uh, around the world are, uh, are certainly not going up anytime soon and maybe in the US uh, we might see very soon the Federal Reserve start cutting rates um, and in so doing we've seen commodities like gold breaking higher and I think what we're seeing here is cryptocurrency starting to behave a little bit more like gold um, more like a commodity you know people do rush to gold in times of low yield um, and uh, I think we're seeing a little bit of that here with uh, with crypto. So if that isn't going to change, um, you know, and we are going to see a, uh, a continuation, you know, this, well, I say continuation, but um, a move back to central banks cutting interest rates, you know, there's every chance that that could spur, um, you know, us, us higher in uh, in the crypto world. Uh, and then add on to that, of course, we have the situation with Facebook where, you know, that the whole idea around there, uh, their own cryptocurrency has really come to a sort of prominence in the last couple of weeks and has been making a, a lot of headlines and you know, a lot of people talking about the uh, the consequences of uh, of them having their own cryptocurrency and what that could mean for the uh, for the broader market and you know for for uh, for broader adoption. So uh, you know a lot of conversations have been sparked out of that. So I think all of this coming together 
who's really seen uh, yeah, has, has really seen a, a lot of fresh money coming into crypto, and uh, I'm sure there's a little bit of FOMO going on the, out there, the fear of missing out. Um, but uh, it's 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 certainly uh, one way traffic for now. So um, you know, keep an eye on things and see if there's anything to suggest that may change. You know, we look at uh, look at Ether; it's rallied almost twenty percent since uh, since Thursday. It's quite a rally. Uh, on to FX, uh, where the dollar took uh, center stage on Friday. Um, if you remember that chart, I kept showing you the DXY chart for the dollar index um, and the all important trend line of the 200 day moving average support. Well, it's uh, it broke that on Friday and broke it convincingly. Uh, Euro rallied up to uh, high at 113.70, cable uh, up to 127.40, uh, and we had dollar Swiss dropping down to a low of 97.65. Dollar yen was so the minor exception um, stuck mid-range around the 107.40 mark. Uh, and ironically, this was really on a day when um, U.S. bond yields actually recovered a little with the uh, with the U.S. 10-year back up to 2.06% uh, uh, where it had touched uh, down to 1.97% um, on Thursday. Equities were a bit of a mixed bag, uh, a lot of different things putting them around, obviously, the uh, the headlines from uh, from the president. Um, we've also got the uh, in the UK. We've got the um, the ongoing uh, Conservative Party uh, leadership contest, uh, which will also um, determine who the next prime minister will be, at least until the next general election. Um, you know, people looking at interest rates, obviously, as we've mentioned. So, uh, Euro market, the European markets gave back a little bit of uh, of Thursday's gains. Um, but the U.S., for the most part, uh, was in the green right to the very end of the day and a bit of late-day profit-taking. Uh, saw all three major indices close lower by you know, between 0.1% and 0.2%. Um, and as mentioned earlier, gold uh, touched a high just over 14.10, but closed uh, near a 14.02. So, a um, little bit of technical analysis. Really couldn't show you anything other than a crypto... Uh, a crypto chart after the moves we've had over uh, over Friday and into the weekend. Um, so let's take a look at Bitcoin and the, the chart I have up here. It looks uh, it looks particularly pretty, doesn't it? With all the different colours on it. Uh, that's what I've actually drawn up here is a daily Bitcoin chart, which shows us the uh, the parabolic move we had uh, late 2017 into 2018 up to the high, which uh, on here shows us 19666. Uh, and then the, uh, the move down through 2018 before we broke the 5,800 level down to uh, around 3,100 uh, just before the end of 2019. And then we can see the move back up here. Um, other than breaking the 10,000 level and uh, this level here, um, just shy of 11,700, the level I really want to pick out is shown by these, uh, these colorful lines here. This is a Fibonacci uh, retracement. Uh, graph, if you like, uh, and this really just shows the percentage retracement we've had since the low. So how much have we retraced the move from the high to the low? Um, I'm not going to give you a lecture on Fibonacci retracements uh, if you're not familiar with them. Um, I suggest you do a little, just do a little bit of research. But um, there's certainly some significant levels there, um, and the one most obvious one is the 50% retracement which comes in at around 11,381. And as you can see right now, that green line there that says we're trading around 11,200. So um, we're just, just shy of making new highs on the year as we speak. That level should act as some fairly good resistance, um, at least in the short term. Um, you know, it's certainly something the market will look at, especially those technical traders out there. Um, but a break of that, um, might well open up to the next significant level, which is the 61.8% retracement level, which uh, takes us well above 13,000. So, you know, just keep an eye on that. It's not always a case of looking at old highs and old lows. Uh, there are certainly some other uh, important levels to look at, which the uh, the technical traders amongst us will certainly do. And with that, I'm going to wish you uh, all the very best for the uh, upcoming week. Hope your trading goes well, and um, hopefully plenty of more action like we saw last week. Wish you all the best. Speak to you tomorrow. Cheers.